I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to tell you something that every successful person has to do, including you. Believe it or not, every successful person in this world has jumped. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. You eventually, you are going to have to jump. You cannot just exist in this life. You have got to try to live. If you are waking up thinking that it's got to be more to your life than it is, man, believe that it is. Believe in your heart of hearts that it is. But to get to that life, you're going to have to jump. And I'll tell you why I call it jumping. See, God, when he created all of us, he gave every last one of us a gift at birth. He never created a soul without endowing them with a gift. You just got to quit looking at gifts as running, jumping, singing, dance. It's more than that. It's if you know how to network, you can connect dots, if you draw, if you teach. Some of y'all fry chicken better than anybody else. Bake pie. Some of you cut hair, color hair. Some people do grass. I got a partner, man. With Never wanted to go out with us because we stayed out too late. Come on, man, go out with now. I got to get up early, mom. Cutting Miss Johnson's grass. We kept laughing at this dude. Cutting grass. How much they pay you? He got a landscaping company in Cleveland worth $4 million. Because all he do is cut grass. But he was gifted at it. I got a partner on a detail shop, make $800,000 a year detailing cars. He got six mobile trucks running around. $800,000 a year. All he do is detail cars. That's his gift. That's what he loved to do. You've got to identify that gift. Now listen to me. When you see people in life, when you're standing on the cliff of life, and you see people soaring by, and you see people soaring, going to exotic places, you hear about them doing wonderful things, maybe you look up the street and your neighbor just gets a car every year and every two years, you know, how is he doing that? Have you ever thought Maybe this person right here has identified their gift and is living in their gift. Because your Bible says, this your Bible, says your gift will make room for you. Your gift, not your education. You go get an education, that's nice. But if you don't use your gift, that education only going to take you so far. I know a lot of people got degrees, man, that they ain't even using. It's your gift. But the only way for you to soar is you got to jump. You got to take that gift that's packed away on your back. You got to jump off that cliff and pull that cord. That gift opens up and provides the soar. If you don't ever use it, you're going to just go to work. And if you're getting up going to work on a job every day that you hate going to, that ain't living, man. You just existed. At one point in time, you ought to see what living's like. But the only way to see what living's like, you got to jump. And here's the problem. Let me just be real with you. When you first jump, let me tell you something. Your parachute will not open right away. I, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could tell you it did, but it don't. When you jump, it's not going to open right away. You're going to hit them rocks. You're going to get some skin tore off on them cliffs. You're going to get all your clothes tore off. You're going to get some cuts on you. You're going to be bleeding pretty bad. But eventually, eventually, the parachute has to open. That is a promise of God. That ain't a theory. That's a promise. His promises is true, because listen to me. You cannot name one single thing God has not gotten you through. Name it. And if he ain't got you through it, he currently pulling you through it right now. And the living proof of it is you sitting in here. If he hadn't got you through it, you wouldn't even be here. So if he ain't never not got you through it, why would he not let your parachute open? He, it has to open, man. But it, it, you got to jump, though. Now, here's another thing. You can play it safe and deal without the cuts and the tags. And you can stand on that cliff of life forever safe. 
But if you don't jump, I got another promise I can make you. Your parachute will never open. You'll never know. You'll never know what God really has for you. See, your God has a wonderful life for you. Once again, I'm going to refer to your Bible. Now, you go down there, you memorize these scriptures, you're going to apply them to yourself. Your Bible says that he comes to give you life and give you life more abundantly. If I were you, I would jump. Because that's the only way to get to that abundant life. You got to jump, man. You got to take a chance. Now, when I get through talking, there are those of you who have discussed this in the car. Well, I got bills. And I got, I got bills. I, whether you stay on the cliff or you jump, you're going to have bills. Well, if I quit my job, I'm going to ruin my credit. If you got a job, you're living check to check. Even if you got A1 credit, you can't buy nothing else no damn way. At one point in time, man, do yourself a favor. Go, go see what God really do. God hold you up, man. He ain't going to let you fall. He ain't bring you this far and let you fall. Do yourself a favor, man. Before you leave this world, before you die, jump. Just jump one time. Entitled, take the lid off the jar. Those of you who own a pet, a dog, you're very familiar with they have the possibility of catching fleas. Fleas are one of the smallest insects. Fleas have one of the highest vertical leaps of any living insect based on their size. A flea has a 36 inch vertical leap. Now, if you capture a flea, and you put it in a jar, and you put the lid on the jar, that flea still has a 36 vertical leap. So it will start jumping in that jar until it hits his head. And once it hits his head, he start making adjustments. So then the flea reduces his jump, and he jumps just high enough to where he almost touches it, but he don't hit the lid and get knocked back down. Now, if you put another flea in there, that flea has a 36-inch vertical. And then once they find out they get knocked down a little bit, that flea starts jumping just before the lid so it don't get knocked down. Funny thing happens. If these fleas have baby fleas in a jar, these fleas are born with a 36-inch vertical. But because their parents are showing them only a four or five inch jump so they don't get hit. These baby fleas who are born with 36 inch verticals, they jump just as high as their parents jump. And what we do as people is we do the same things. We allow our environment to dictate to us. We allow our friends to dictate to us, our circle of associates to dictate to us how high we jump. When I was in the sixth grade and the teacher asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up, and I, she had everybody write an assignment on a piece of paper, I wrote down on a piece of paper I wanted to be on TV. She called everybody's name and had them stand up at their desk, and when she got to mine, she said, Little Stevie, come up to the front of the class. I'm thinking this is a great moment for me. I've written something on my paper so wonderful that it's better than all the rest. I'm going up to get a gold star. I got up there. She said, Why did you write that on your paper? And I said, Because that was our assignment for today. <laughs> she said, But why did you write it on your paper, though? I said, Because I want to be on TV. Then she just started breaking me down. Who do you know on TV? Anybody in this school ever been on TV? No, ma'am. Anybody in your family ever been on TV? No, ma'am. She just destroyed me in front of these cats. I thought I was getting the gold star. Found out I wasn't. I was heartbroken. She reported me to my parents, and I'm being a smart aleck in class. Sent me home with the note pinned on me. I got home. I'm thinking I'm in a world of trouble. My mom tells my dad that I've been a smart aleck in class, and I'm writing down stuff that's unrealistic. He said, well, what did you want to be, son? I said, I wrote on my paper, I want to be on TV. He looked at my mother and said, well, what's wrong with that? She said, because the teacher says that's unreasonable. He said, how does she know? And that was the first moment that I found out that my father, who had a third grade education, who my mother taught to read and write, I said, man, this guy's on to something. So he told me, to, what did she want you to write? I said, a policeman or fireman or a ball player. She said, write that on the paper and give it back to her. She said, but every morning when you wake up, take your paper, put it in your drawer. Read your paper every morning when you wake up and read your paper every night before you go to bed. If you turn your TV on today, the little boy in the sixth grade is on TV.